Next is B for bladder. We want her to void within six hours after birth. If she can't urinate by six hours, she'll get a urinary in and out cath to empty the bladder. A full bladder can increase bleeding. If she can't urinate on her own, we can help encourage urination by giving the, her a peri wash bottle in warm water to help. We can also turn on the water faucet and have the sound and the dripping will help her to relax in order to urinate. We need to watch for signs and symptoms of a UTI. Do you have any burning or stinging when you pee? We want her to void every two to three hours to keep her bladder empty. That will help stimulate or keep the uterus contracted so it doesn't um, affect the bleeding. For the first two to three days after delivery, an increase in urination is normal, and that's called diuresis. L is for lochia. Lochia is the natural discharge after childbirth. It's divided into three stages. The rubra stage is dark red discharge, and it lasts for the first three days. It is like a heavy period. The next phase is on days four to 10 is cirrhosa and is a pinkish brown and the discharge should become a lot lighter at this point. Alba is when things start to return to normal and is a whitish to yellow mucousy discharge from 11 to 21 days. And then they should have uh, very little bleeding after that and it should return to normal uh, menstrual cycles. On the right hand side, you'll see where, how do we know how much is too much bleeding? So you will describe the amount of uh, blood or discharge that the woman has postpartum by the size of the stains in her pads. So scant is just a smear. Small is a little bit larger than that, about four inches wide. Moderate is about six inches or about half the pad. And a large is the pad is saturated. So you could say two, four, six, and saturated, and that's an easy way to remember how much bleeding the woman has had. Now, upon postpartum assessment, the nurse will assess for problems. So let's say she has a lot of bleeding, but she also has a firm fundus. Well, the two don't make sense because a firm fundus means that the vessels are clamped off in the uterus and there shouldn't be that much bleeding. So a lot of bleeding in the presence of a firm fundus indicates that she may have a laceration that was not seen. And then we need to inspect the perineum for lacerations and then notify the physician. If she soaks more than one pad an hour, that is indicative of too much bleeding. We also ask her to report any clots that are bigger than the size of a golf ball or a quarter size clots. That indicates that there is some bleeding that's happening inside the uterus and it's clotting and then coming out. So we need to address the bleeding issues. Maybe she needs a hemoglobin. We will definitely keep an eye on her vital signs and um, report any abnormalities to the physician. Next is episiotomy and perineum. As the nurse, you will do a visual inspection of the woman's vaginal area, her episiotomy site, and anus for hemorrhoids. It is important that you do assess these things and it's often done at the same time while you're checking the fundus and massaging the fundus, looking at bleeding and clots, and you're also visualizing the perineum for episiotomy sites, repairs that were done during after delivery, and looking for any signs of a hematoma or lacerations that are bleeding. When assessing the episiotomy site, we can use the RITA acronym to help us remember the things to check and assess and to document. R is for redness. E is for edema or swelling. E is for ecchymosis or bruising. D is for discharge. Does it have any drainage coming out of the episiotomy repair? And A is for approximation. approximation. So approximation means that the edges are together and they're not separated. So we would document an, a normal looking episiotomy site as episiotomy is midline, it's well approximated, without drainage, redness, or swelling. Episiotomy sites can be quite uncomfortable or even painful. We can provide ice packs in the area to help soothe some of the discomfort. Sitz baths are great. They also help with discomfort, but the main purpose of a sitz bath is to prevent infection. It is a wound and it needs to be treated like a wound. 
and the, in the fact that it's in the um, in the the area where we defecate, it prevents an even greater risk for infection. So we need to keep the area clean. The use of sitz baths helps do that. They can also use the peri wash bottle to help clean the episiotomy site. So after they use the prairie wash bottle, after they use the bathroom, then they should blot from front to back with tissue, never wipe. We will also inspect the area for hematomas and lacerations. Lacerations are apparent when there is a trickle of blood coming out of the vagina in the presence of a firm fundus. And hematomas are evidenced by uh, purplish uh, dark spots that look like little blisters um, in the vagina or on the perineal area. Sometimes hematomas are not always apparent, but when our vital signs start to trend down towards where it looks like there may be some hypovolemia going on, or mom's extra tired, or there's something has changed and we might need to assess for a hematoma that's where we can't see it. So at that point, the physician might like order a hemoglobin. Next is L for legs. You may see in other literature uh, to check for Homan sign for DVTs. The Homan sign is not actually recommended anymore. Studies have found that it's not effective in determining whether or not a woman has a uh, DVT in her legs. So we focus on DVT prevention. DVT prevention is ambulation in the hall, increasing PO fluids, checking pedal pulses, and checking for edema in the legs. Now we're also checking for edema to assess uh, for any sort of fluid retention that the woman may have. It also helps us uh, to correlate that with any high blood pressure that she might be experiencing. You do need to know the signs and symptoms of a DVT. So hot, red, painful areas in the calves of the legs. Um, and we will assess for those things during our physical exam. We will feel back there uh, for those symptoms. The last E is for emotions. With the emotion section, we are going to watch and document how bonding occurs between mom and baby and other family members. We're gonna watch for attachment and we're gonna teach mom about signs and symptoms of postpartum blues. Postpartum blues, blues can be normal. So we ask her that if she has any, um, any thoughts of harming herself or her baby that she should contact her physician or ask for help as soon as possible. Any disinterest in her baby while under your care should be reported to the physician or social worker. Well, look at some categories of the nursing care. The first one is promote. We will promote hemostasis. With hemostasis, that means we want to make sure the woman has normal vital signs. Sometimes it is normal to have an elevated temperature after delivery for the first couple days that's usually due to dehydration. So if the woman develops a low grade temperature, we will encourage her to increase her PO fluids and then keep rechecking it. If it continues to go up, then we will suspect infection, but generally it is from dehydration. We will promote urinary and bowel function. We wanna make sure she keeps her bladder empty and that she is um, on stool softeners and she's getting a high fiber diet so she can have an easier bowel movement. That first bowel movement is always a little bit difficult. We want to promote rest and we want to encourage bonding with her baby. With prevention methods, we want to prevent infection. So we want to teach good hygiene habits, keeping her pads changed, um, and using the peri wash bottle and the sitz bath. We want to prevent injury from falls. Orthostatic hypotension is common postpartum, so we want to teach her to get up slowly, let her legs dangle for a minute before she gets up out of the bed. We'll also ask her to utilize the nursing help before she gets up for the very first time. We also want to uh, be careful if she is taking an opiate for pain relief that we uh, educate her on the signs uh, on the uh, side effects of that medication. We want to prevent thrombus and clots and DVTs. So we will encourage PO fluids and ambulation to help discourage clots from forming. We want to provide pain management for this woman. She has after pains, which are quite painful sometimes, breast pain and perineal pain. So we will provide pain medication as needed, as ordered. Usually NSAIDs are enough to suffice for the pain management. 
We'll also encourage her to use her sits bath to help with the after would help with the perineal pain. And we can provide ice packs and cold cabbage leaves or other um, cold methods to provide pain relief. There are some laboratory work that we need to pay attention to in the postpartum woman. We want to monitor the hemoglobin and the hematocrit. We want to note if the H and H before delivery. That way we can compare it after delivery. We want to note the blood type and the RH factor because if the woman is RH negative, she will need a Rogam shot before she goes home. We want to know the woman's rubella status also. If she is not immune, she will need a rubella immunization before she goes home.